So today's message, uh, if you bear with me, I just want us to take a, a bit of a walk in the word of God. I want us to, I want to be addressing something that I want you to catch in the spiritual realm. I want us to understand every season has its own battle strategies. Any season that comes, God equips his people and enables his people Mungu anawekeza watu wake na kuwawezesha watu wake. And gives them divine strategies na, for every battle. Anawapatia mbinu za kiungu kwa kila vita. That means Yonekmanisha, when a season comes, wakati majira inakuja, we must align ourselves with the season and also change with the season. Lazima tujiambatanishe na yale majira. Are we together in that one? Tuko pamoja kwa hiyo. I understand Inaelewa, sometimes if we get used to a system of fighting battles we might miss. Wakati fulani tukikuwa tu na mpango fulani wa kupigana na vita kila majira. God will give you strategies Mungu on how to fight your battles. kupigana vita zako. I'm sure everybody in here. Ina hakika kila mmoja wetu. We are all going through something at a given time. Kitu fulani wakati fulani. Your battle may not be, be my battle. Vita yako pengine sio yako. My battle might may not be yours. Vita yangu pengine sio yako. There are parents here who are in serious problems with their children. Hapo ambao katika that's a different battle. There are marriages that are surviving because of the battle. There are businesses that are people involved in serious battles. But let me help someone. The method and what you used to do yesterday might not be applicable today. So you must renew your mind on how to fight the battles. There are times you fought battle in a very carnal way through your mouth. You, you abuse, you abuse back. And God didn't even care. God, in, God ignored your days of ignorance. But there are times you don't even open your mouth. Even if your neighbor calls you animals in the game park and take you to domestic animals, you don't talk because you have no strength to fight with your mouth. I want you to know every season comes with a battle strategy. I also want to say every season God raises up prophetic voices. Prophets don't don't predict but they prophesy and they speak the oracles of God or the mind of God. So, uh, so we ought to know the mind of God even concerning storms that comes our way. So that the people can be warned. That's why I'm saying today for every battle God will give you strategy on how you need to fight on how you need to arm yourself for the battle. Ezekiel prophesying says, Ezekiel 33, if a watchman or a seer sees a sword coming and, and does not sound the trumpet and warn the people and if those people are hurt, the blood of the hurt people will be required from his hands. What do I want to say? Prophetic gracing comes with a huge responsibility because it's not on a scene but it's also what action do you take after you speak? Do you speak? So see us, tell your neighbor, be a seer. You've got to see before your children get into drugs, you need to see. Before your you, you you landlord hikes the rent, you need to see. And decide if you, want, if you want it down. Come 
Come on, church. We have power and authority. God has ordained us to speak. So, and I, I think from last meeting, I spoke about Apostle Paul. How the people in the ship, the people who were sitting with him were granted to him. After sending a warning and his warning speak ignored, we saw Apostle Paul say, I perceive that this voyage will end up in disaster. Though there will be much loss of the cargo, Apostle Paul assures the people, guaranteed them that there will be no life that will be lost. He spoke like a man of God. I pray that we will be speaking like men of God. I speak we shall be speaking like men of God and not like everybody and anybody. So as I was speaking about the storm, I want us cautiously to be warned. To be extremely careful for the season that we are about to enter into. The Bible says, the sons of Issachar had the understanding of the times. Minister Peter quoted that in the prayer this morning. In the book of Chronicles, he has just quoted that. So the sons of Issachar had the understanding of times. They knew what to, ought to be done. So they knew what to do and what ought to be done. I want to suggest to the church today we must be able to understand the times and the seasons so we are prepared spiritually and so that we know how to fight our battles. This year has not been business as usual. But one thing God has done to the church is renewing our strength so we can face the enemy. This season that we have been in has been a testing season. Our faith has been tested. And our capacity for battles has been enlarged. Honeymoon days are way behind us. They are gone. So when the season changed, change with the season. So that you may know how to fight the battles. I had an opportunity to speak in Ghana about change. And I will quote a few things about change. Change is about your mindset. You cannot be changed until you change your mind. The way you think, the way you act, the way you look at things. Change starts with you, the way you look at things. And unless our minds are changed, we all grew up in villages. Every single one of us. We came from somewhere, background. Some of the backgrounds were worse than others. But we came into understanding that God was in a serious business of taking us somewhere. Unless your mindset is changed, it will be impossible for you to walk the journey God has for you. So each season requires change. So I say once again, we must change the way we do things and the way we think. Change comes with decision making. Meaning when time of change comes, there are decisions that must be made. In your family, in your businesses, in the house of God, there must be changes. So the other thing, at times, and more than, more than often, decisions that we make might be very tough decisions. But decisions must be made. Change is about making a sacrifice. 
Meaning kujitoa when kidhabi. you have to change you have to sacrifice Wakati something. Wakati unapofahamu mabadiliko lazima ufanye dhabi you have to give up this. Lazima uwaatane na hii. For you to get this. Kwa ukupata hiki change comes with a price tag. Mabadiliko yanakuja na gharama. There is no change that just comes. Hakuna mabadiliko tu ambayo yanakuja bila. It comes bile. with a price tag. Inakuja na gharama. Change also pia mabadiliko has something to do with what we value and what we do. Iko na kile ambayo ina kile ambayo tunadhamini zaidi na kile tunaambao tunafanya. Change comes to move us from the known to the unknown. Mabadiliko yanakuja kutotoa mambo tunajua kupeleka mambo hatujui. Change mabadiliko help us to reach those things uh, that are ahead. Inatusaidia kufikia mambo yale ambayo yako mbele. May I suggest and say the words? Wacha nikuashirie na kuambia kilicho kibaya. Change is very uncomfortable. Ya kwa mabadiliko sio akupendeza. Because the season of change. Majira ya mabadiliko. There are things that you must give up. Kuna vitu ambavyo lazima uachane nayo. There are friends that you have to kiss goodbye. Kuna ambao lazima uabusu kwa heri. There are family members that need invitation to come to your home. Kuna baadhi ya watu jamii ambao nataka ni wapatie kwa kanisa kwa kujua kwa kuna people whom you don't allow them to dictate you or walk on your toes kuna watu ambao unataka ni wakutembelee katika vidole vyako there are bodies that you tell them kuna marafiki ambao unawaambia la imekwisha there are people that you must push behind kuna watu ambao lazima wasukume nyume so you can reach out to the things that are here ukapata kufikia mambo ambayo yako mbele yako that's why I, cha- i said change is very uncomfortable yoni nimesema kubadilika hakupendezi kabisa because there are bodies you must have tea and coffee every day wajili kuna marafiki ambao mlikuwa mnakunywa chai na kahawa na kila siku from the place of your sign lakini wakakusimamisha kufika mahali pa mapapa and at times god will say kiss them goodbye na wakati unafika mungu anakuambia wapuzi kwa heri and let go wacha waende na wache mungu aingie changes never easy badiliko sio rahisi i know it i went through it i went through it jua nimeipitia na naipitia bado change is about boldness na kama kubadilisha ni lazima ukwe na ujasiri because for every decision you have to make kila muzi ambao utakana kufanya you got to take a stand and spoke with boldness usimame na unene na kwa ujasiri because change ile mabadiliko is the boldness that gives you strength to walk into the new space ni ujasiri ambao unakupatia nguvu ya kutembea katika nafasi mpya romans talks about change romans 12 warumi 12 na nana kuhusu mabadiliko change is about being transformed mabadiliko ni kuhusu kubadilishwa by the renewing of our minds kwa kufanywa upya mawazo yetu that we may prove tukapata kudhibitisha what is good and acceptable perfect will of god kilicho bora na kubadilika haswa mbele za bwana in the book uh, in, the, in in my book um, i think live by faith katika kitabu changu ambao ni kuishi kwa imani there is a mention right in that book about the five dynamics of change number one, i have said that change is very personal ya kwanza nimesema ya kwamba badilika ni kwa kibinafsi change is not about a group ya kwamba sio kuhusu kikundi change is personal ni kuhusu kibinafsi because we are individuals and god knows us kwa jili sisi ni kibinafsi na mungu anatujua our own name even our fingerprints kwa majina yetu na hata pia alama za vidole vyetu change number 2 is possible ya kwamba mabadiliko pia inawezekana number 3 Change is painful. Ya kwamba ya tatu mabadiliko ni uchungu. Number 4, change is permanent. Ya ina kwamba mabadiliko ni ya kudumu. And the last one number 5, change is powerful. Na ya tano ya kwamba mabadiliko ni ya nguvu. Allow me to say that change is a process. Wacha niseme ya kwamba mabadiliko ni msururu. And the process of a man of God. Ya kwamba na ile msururu ya mtumishi wa Bwana. Na mtu wa Bwana. Sometimes it's messy and very untidy. Wakati mwingine ni mbaya na ipendezi. Because God does not give excuse kwa ajili bwana hawi radhi so change kwa mabadiliko is about your conviction not about your conveniences ni kuhusu ya kwamba kushawishika kwako lakini sio vile unataka change mabadiliko is what ushers us or guarantees us ni, the promises ni kile ambao kinatuingisha ama kutuhakikishia ahadi change is that transformation mabadiliko ni ile kubadilika where you are so changed and so transformed na kama umebadilika zaidi na kwenda kubadilishwa zaidi now you can start to have a vision and a dream sasa unaweza kuwa na maono na hata ndoto when we speak about change 
if for us to change the nation of Kenya, we must be changed. We must be changed. We all speak about corruption. We must be changed. You must choose to do things in a different way. The reason Daniel was a nation shaker and a history maker being a slave boy is because he understood the dynamics of change. Going through the process of being transformed as a young man. Then you had to make choices. And one of the choices in Daniel chapter number one, then your purpose in his heart not to defile himself with the king's portion. And because he was so purpose and so focused, he was seasoned with favor. He was different than everybody else. And what I love about the story of Daniel, the Bible says he was distinguished above others. And the Bible says something that I love. An excellent spirit was found in Daniel. That is what made him stand out more than any other person. So today, we have come in this service. But I want you to know that we need to change. And I want to say to you, it is okay for you to be different. When you become different, don't think you are weird. Even when you sense that it is not a season for you to have hang around. You are not weird. God is setting you apart for some reason. So you may be able to hear his voice and discern. You don't have to be classified with everybody else. Because you are unique. Remain to the course. You don't have to say what everybody else is saying in town. You can have your own opinion. You are entitled. You don't have to be a man pleaser to join every conversation. You can choose not to talk. And when people ask you why you are quiet, you tell them I'm uncomfortable with the subject. And if I comment, every one of you will change your mind. You must be different. I chose to be different in my family. And I have, as I have told you, when we used to have family gatherings, I refused my siblings to speak because I am the priest in the home. They will say, you know? You talk your nonsense when you go to the pub. But as long as I'm here, I pray what I want to pray, God. I thank you for these sinners. Every drunkard, I arrest your spirit. They can't take me to the chief. Because that was not to them, I was praying for them. What am I saying? Be different. You're not people's opinion, you're God's opinion. Be different. Be set apart. Amen. Amen. Are we good so far? All right, we are unique. Touch your neighbor and tell them I'm unique. <laughs> Never, never want to be like anybody else. You're special. Be content by who you are. When you become different, 
then you start to walk into the place of your vision and assignment. Anza kutembea katika eneo lako la maoni na tajukumu. The moment you become different then you can dream like Joseph. Unapokuwa tofauti utaanza kuota kama Yusuf. Different people are passionate. Na kwamba watu tofauti wako na hamasa. When you become different you will be able to walk into your call. Unapokuwa tofauti unaweza kutembea katika mwito wako. I want to say, say to you. Nataka kuambia. This morning you are a masterpiece. Asubuhi leo kwamba wewe ni wa kipekee. Very special before God. Wewe ni speciali sana mbele za Mungu.